On several MacBook models, Apple made a heatsink that has no direct contact with the CPU. For example, this 2018 MacBook Air uses a heatsink of that type. Under the microscope here, we could see we have a thick layer of thermal compounds spread over both thighs of the CPU. Let's go ahead and attach the heatsink and see what happens. Let's just put the four heatsink screws in and tighten them down. So we have our four heatsink screws fully attached to the board. Um, let's go ahead and take the heatsink off now and let's see what our spread pattern looks like when we have a thin layer of thermal compound, or a thick layer I should say, of thermal compound spread out over the die. Now keep in mind this is not the recommended application method. This, this test just shows that the heatsink does not make contact with the CPU. All right, our four screws are taken off and here is our heatsink. And you can see here there's actually no thermal paste on it. There's just a little bit where that the thick layers kind of touch the heatsink. Let's look under the scope and let's have a look at that heatsink. So here's our heatsink under the microscope. Notice that there is no thermal contact here. Now, no matter how hard we really push on this heatsink, so if we put this back on and really push, there is no contact here because the gap is simply so big here. Okay, we're pushing, we're putting pressure on here, we're moving it back and forth, and there is still no heat sink contact here. Now, normal, therm normal thermal pastes are really not made to bridge heat over this large of a gap. Normal thermal pastes are just made to kind of take out those microscopic imperfections on the between the CPU and the heat sink. This is much more than that, and most thermal compounds over time are going to be way too thin for this, and they'll kind of fall off of the two surfaces, and they're just really not made to bridge heat over this large of a contact space. Even if we apply a relatively large amount to the center of the CPU, we're going to see here that it really does not spread well. So we just applied more than a sufficient amount of thermal compound. We're going to just set this heat sink down here. Okay, I'm not going to put screws in it for this time. We are going to put pressure in all four corners here. And let's take it off and let's see what happened. Notice how it really didn't spread out and there is a large portion of the CPU that is uncovered and that is not what you want. This can create dye hotspots which can potentially limit processor life. Now here's a quick look at the original thermal compound that Apple supplied on this device. Notice how it's a very thick, gritty substance. Okay, this is made to bridge heat over a large gap such as these devices have. And there is currently nothing on the market that can come close to the consistency of this stuff. Notice how thick it is. A regular thermal compound just won't cut it in a situation like this where there is this large of a gap. Okay. The Apple thermal compound has a lot of large particles in it, and it is specifically made to carry heat over long distances. Now let's apply some carbon black and see how it compares to the original thermal paste supplied on these devices. So we are going to use our recommended application method, which is a line down the center of each die. Now the applicator on our syringes is specifically designed to deliver the proper amount of thermal compound. Now keep in mind, even if you use a lot of a standard thermal compound, that thermal compound is still not designed for as large of a gap as on these devices. So let's go ahead and attach our heat sink. We are going to use a slight amount of pressure here. So let's just go ahead and push this down. Okay, so we're going to put pressure in all four corners of the CPU. Um, this is going to be less pressure than, than what we used with MX4. This is just to demonstrate the adequate spread pattern of this thermal paste. Okay, and notice how the CPU is totally covered. Right, notice the large particle sizes compared to Apple's paste. This paste is very, very close to the original thermal paste supplied on these devices and is specifically designed to bridge heat over this large gap compared to other thermal pastes. Carbon black is not intended for use on every device. It is only intended for devices that use Apple's thick black thermal compound supplied from the factory on some of their devices. Some of these devices include the 2018 through 2020 MacBook Air and the RAM portion of the M1 SoCs. In addition, carbon black could also be used on iPhones and iPads and um, Apple TVs. For more information, see our product information page. There's also a compatibility guide if you're unsure of what devices it could be used on.